Hello once again, this is Robert Gebhardt, a freelance translator from Italian to English, and once again I'd like to talk to you about some tips and tools and tricks that I feel are useful in our field of work. This will follow along the lines of the last video I made which talked about uh, time management and workflow management, but in terms of computer programs. Today I'm going to talk to those of you who are more serious about managing their workflow, managing their time. And I think for all of you who are out there trying to earn a living and make a living out of what you're doing, working for yourself, whether this be freelance translation or freelance writing or editing or design or pretty much anything along those lines, if you are an upstart, an entrepreneur, uh, working in a home office, basically if you don't have a boss, if you don't have someone else telling you what to do, you will find these useful because you really need to take things like this seriously. You can't just think, I'll go with the flow and wait for an inspiration to work because it does not work that way if you have to earn a living. So anyway, if you are serious about these things, I think it's best if you read some serious literature about it. So the first book, the first one, which I think is the book that everyone should start off with if they're considering time management is Getting Things Done by David Allen. This is, in terms of time management, this is the most important. And by the way, I don't think, I, time management is kind of a misnomer. It should be work management, workflow management, something like that. If you just concentrate on time, in fact, it can be sort of bad, which, which I'll get into actually. But to start off, you should get David Allen's Getting Things Done. And it, it just helps a lot in terms of how to manage your calendar, how to manage your free moments. Like if you have uh, 10 minutes free, if you're waiting in the doctor's office even, how can, you know, rather than reading the literature they have there, how can you make sure you have your own stuff to do for those extra 10 minutes that are available? And basically, how can you take control of your life? And Getting Things Done by David Allen is definitely the best place to start off for this. And it just shows how to view your life differently and how to view what you do in terms of your long-term goals broken down into medium term, into short term, et cetera, et cetera. So then you could know that what you're doing helps out for the end goal of whatever you're trying to do in life and that you're not just being busy for, busy, for being busy sake. Um, now, along those lines, once you have read this, I should say I've read it and I, and I love that book, but I don't follow it to the letter. I think you should take what you can from these books and conform it to your own needs. And along those lines, I do think the issue with time management by itself is that you'll become very productive and what used to take you maybe three, four days, you can now do in half a day. And so then you'll be tempted to say, well, I had such a productive day and it's only noon, you know, why don't I see what else I can do and it'll be a great day. And this is actually wrong uh, for various reasons. And along those lines, a book which helps for this next step is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss which I must say probably has the worst book title I've ever heard. It just sounds like, you know, it sounds like a scam. But it's actually really good. And uh, it's, um, for me, it was like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, one of those books I thought would, you know, kind of be a scam, but actually had a lot of good points. And 4-Hour Workweek has many great, first of all, links and ideas and frame, um, you know, frameworks and for your different types of mindsets. Um, but in terms of time management, it also really helps in terms of putting things in perspective. And along these lines, you'll have various things like maybe you're very focused on your freelance work and, and how to make enough money, etc. On the other hand, you know, it's a roller coaster. There's ups and downs. So you're going to have bad days. And on those days, you want to make sure that you don't lose all your motivation. So how do you do that? You do that by having different types of activities going on at the same time. So maybe if I have a bad work day, at the same time, maybe I'll work out of the gym and I'll achieve some new goal there. And so it helps out in changing your view about all this and in terms of dealing with the idea that you can achieve a lot by not just staying busy all the time and keep working and, you know, try to manage your time more and more efficiently just so you're always busy and getting a lot done. I've done an atrocious job of, of, of explaining it, by the way, but it's, um, it, I mean, just look at the book blurb or people describing it and you'll get a better idea of everything that the book can offer. But uh, I do highly recommend it um, in, in, in terms of a next step. Now, um, I should say there are also some personal recommendations that I like to give for um, people who are 
you know, thinking about time management or workflow management, such as, such as uh, um, not checking your email first thing in the morning, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to talk about them here. I do talk about them in uh, this free pamphlet that I made up that is available. I'll, I'll put a link to it down down under. And um, But uh, for this video, I just want to concentrate on the books because I'm already taking quite a bit of time. So the next book that I want to talk to you about is um, Work the System by Sam Carpenter. Now this book is great because basically what it teaches you is that for every workflow, for every job, for every business you have, you need a system. And this system should be able to divide everything that needs to be done in small, very easy steps. And the goal for this system is that the worst employee you know, I mean, you know, someone who still has their wits about them, but kind of, you know, the laziest, not very good worker employee that you know would be able to follow the system and still accomplish everything, right? And uh, what this allows you to do is just see that everything is part of a system. So e things that might seem natural to you, once you write them down, you can see how they fit into the overall system. And maybe you can spot different changes or uh, alterations you can make. And this also lets you then share the system. So maybe if you start working with someone, you can say, oh, I have a system for doing this. Check it out. And they'll take a look. And maybe they'll, then they'll have feedback. And they say, hey, why don't you do this or that? Because I, I tend to you know, change up the way I do this part of your workflow. And it, it just really helps to just have it down there. And his whole book is just about systems, by the way. But it, and it seems like a bit much, but it's enthralling. And so I highly recommend it. By the way, if that seems like a, a bit much, then the next book, the final book that I mentioned, will, uh, will seem like quite a bit much when I just tell you the title. It's called The Checklist Manifesto. And it's by Atul Gawande. Now, The Checklist Manifesto is a book purely about checklists. That's it and the importance of a checklist. And uh, he goes through various examples. I mean, you'll see like why the same airplane crash doesn't happen twice, right? And it's purely because, well, airplanes are very, the airline companies are very good at communicating with each other in terms of when a crash comes, when they find the black box, when they explore the reasons why this happened, and then finding a way to avoid it in the future. And the way they do this is just to create a checklist that the pilots and co-pilots can follow to the letter. So anytime anything happens, they just have to grab their checklist and follow, you know, point one, point two, point three, point four, and they have complete faith in that checklist and they know it'll work out. The um, the plane crash in the Hudson is a perfect example of this. That happened a number of years ago in uh, in New York, where a plane crashed in the river. By the way, this had never happened before successfully, um, and uh, you know it had never happened that a plane had crashed on water and they were able to deploy all the all the rafts and everything like you know they had in all the descriptions um but this happened beautifully purely because and you see in interviews with the pilot he was just following his checklist and to him that was what you had to do and so he did it and anyway so he goes through other examples also in terms of hospitals you know all nurses and doctors have a checklist of uh, of just things they're supposed to do like wash their hands etc cetera, etc cetera, because this just the best way to keep track of everything and to do everything and so it just shows the importance of something like this. And if these important industries have it, then you for your business, if you take it seriously, should have something along those lines as well. Once again, it's called The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. Once again, I'll have links for everything down under. Um, but that's pretty much it. So anyway, hopefully you find those useful. And I'll also leave a link to uh, my free PDF uh, with uh, some translation tips. And there I have some other recommendations for workflow and time management. Um, so you can feel free to check that out as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Bye.